this is an opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in and sharing your time with Stephen when there are so many other options that you could choose. Thank you for making Triple UFM your home. Home with a local, Stephen. Yes, indeed, and it's 27 minutes to six, and that was Shallow from Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. And, of course, that wasn't from the Oscars, that particular song. That is the one that has been mastered specifically for the music, and I know I've been playing it nearly every week now, but I absolutely love it, and nobody's actually rung up to complain, so I dare say I'll probably be playing it for another good four weeks or so. Now, as you know, uh, one of the outlets I love of being the host of Tuesday Drive is to invite a discussion, and what excites me even more is when I have a guest or two or four in our Triple U F M studio. Now, sitting me opposite me today is Laura Oliver Graham, Matilda Pritchard, Rosie Whittaker, and Brianna Mead, who are part of the cast, involved in Nara Play's latest production of John Marsden's novel, So Much to Tell You. And welcome everybody to the program. Thanks, Steve. You, you can you can talk to you. It's okay. You've got a microphone right in front of you. So, Laura, I'll, I'll start with you as the uh, director. What's the show about? Well, the story is based around Marina, uh, a young girl who, because of emotional and physical trauma, has chosen not to speak to anybody. Uh, and she attends a girls' boarding school, a uh, fictional school in Victoria. And um, while her story is being revealed throughout the show, so are the stories of the other girls in the dormitory as well. I guess it highlights the, the highs and lows of being a teenager, um, the impact that our parents can have on our lives, and um, I guess that everybody has their own issues underneath those masks that we all often wear. Now, you're a local uh, school teacher in the, yeah. the Shell Haven. Have you found it easy to understand and relate to, uh, to the character? Oh, absolutely. I, this novel has been a favourite of mine since I was a young girl. It's, um, I've, I've always dreamt of bringing this, this show to life in the Shoalhaven. Um, I think having been te- I've been teaching the play as a text, I'm an English teacher, I've been teaching it as a text for many years and I feel that there's such a calling for um, youth productions, particularly in, in our area and particularly for young, mm. young women as mm. well. Um, it's, the roles are so three-dimensional and honest depictions of teenagers. Um, and I'm personally pretty passionate about um, youth being able to express themselves, I guess, in real and authentic ways um, that allow us to appreciate them but also take time to think that we were there once mm. and that mm. we, we sometimes forget that. Um, so we're, we get to sort of put ourselves in their shoes and I think that's what I really love about Marina. Yeah. Oh, Laura, can I just say, when you say things like that, I mean, it makes you and I sound so old. I know. <laughs> Back in my days at now a high or Bomberry High. <laughs> now, Matilda, uh, you've got, well, a very big part to play. How, how have you connected with Marina? Well, I suppose just she's suffered from such emotional and physical trauma that mm. I really had to dig deep into her character and really think about this play and what she would be feeling at the times I'm speaking Mm. and like really bring out her emotion that she did in the book and in the play as well and yeah can can you give us a bit of an idea of of some of the trauma that uh that you know that she has experienced I mean I I've read it as well myself but uh in in, like in your own words obviously because nothing worse than coming from a radio announcer (laughs) (laughs) um so her father um he, um, it was sort of fighting amongst her parents, right. yeah. wasn't it? And yeah, and she's been physically scarred on her face, um, oh. on her face. So Marina, um, Matilda, I was calling you Marina then. <laughs> Matilda <laughs> has to um, have full full scarring makeup on her face wow. every night. It's a pretty big transformation, actually. How long does it take you to put the makeup on? Because that's pretty serious makeup. Oh, it takes about. Half an hour, I guess. Mm. Even an Maybe hour. even yeah. an hour, yeah. yeah. Do you have anybody helping you put the makeup on? Yes. Oh, serious. goodness. Okay. <laughs> Do you know this one? I mean, I've been in th- just a couple of plays uh, throughout uh, my life, <laughs> that's and that's the one thing I've always hated is actually putting on my own makeup. And when you're doing something like that, where you know you've got to reflect scars, kudos to you, because that that is a huge job to uh, undertake. Now, 
One of the things I understand about Marina is that she she tends to avoid people. Is that right? Yeah, she does. And I guess it's because she's so traumatised by her past that she just doesn't really want to connect with those because she doesn't want to feel those mm. feelings that she did in her past again, mm. I suppose, yeah. Now, this is going to sound like a, a very personal question to ask you, but have you, you got quite a few friends at school? Yes, so yeah, I do. So, for you to, to take on this role as a character, that's, you know, trying to avoid people, do you find that challenging? I did, yes. At, start, at the start, I did find it challenging, but I think that I was just so drawn by her character that I really, I really liked her and, like, I really just felt a connection with her and her character, mm. so that helped, yeah. Right, I'm going to ask uh, Rosie to step up to the uh, the microphone. I wish I could call her the golden microphone. I'm so sorry, Rosie. <laughs> it's just a, a boring old black microphone, I'm Aww. afraid. Now, according to one of my sources, your character is described as one of the most promiscuous girls in the <laughs> dorm. Is that true? What's the story? Well, it is explored in the book that she is a bit more promiscuous than the other girls but it doesn't really go into that in the play of course I do get to wear knee-high socks and a shorter skirt than the other girls so that's how did you get that by the director (laughs) don't tell me she encouraged it Laura can I roll up my sleeves yep Laura can I undo my top button yep It was just, I could do anything. <laughs> so it sounds like to me like you're, you're really enjoying this character. I am. She's a lot of fun. And I really, like, I don't relate to some levels of her, but I relate to, I relate to the fact that she is just intrinsically, like, a teenage girl who wants to have fun, who has her own stuff going on, but she, she just wants to hang out with her friends. <laughs> so how does she work in with Marina then? Um, her and Marina don't really get along. Oh, right, right. She is somewhat of a bully to Marina, Mm. especially at the start. Um, I guess they're kind of... Actually, a lot of times throughout the play, they're actually contrasted. Mm. So they're opposites, but they actually have a lot of similarities in that they both have their own stuff going on and they both choose to deal with that by putting on masks of a Mm. different kind. Mm. Is it tough to, to play the role of a bully on stage? I mean, you sound like such a nice person. <laughs> she is. She is. I, I think it is. It does have its own challenges, but mm. I've always, I've always found playing a bully a lot more fun than playing a nice girl. <laughs> because it's like, if I'm gonna act, I may as well, I may as well just change myself entirely. You know. Can I just say, like, I totally agree with what you just said then. I've always found that playing, like, the real evil character mm. is just so much fun because you can just run with it and go completely bananas, exactly. can't you? Yeah. They're Ex- just – they're the best characters. Exactly. So, obviously, you just can't physically hurt anybody on stage, though, can you? Or can you? I'm, oh, oh, oh. I don't have think I, it what hurts. What have I slipped into here? I don't here? think it hurts Marina too much. Oh, <laughs> now, uh, Brianna, you're hiding there behind the uh, director. To, uh, again, come on in front of this beautiful, gorgeous microphone I have placed right in front of you. Tell me about your character. Uh, so my character, Lisa, she's not as, I guess, laid back as the other characters. Mm-hmm. She's more of the sporty and academic sort of character. Okay. Uh, she's okay with Marina. She disagrees with some of the things that the girls, some of the other girls like Sophie, do to her. But, you know, she does have her relations to Marina in terms of... So she doesn't, she doesn't approve of the actions the bully takes? Is that, is that right? No, not always. And does she sort of just step back and let it happen or does she sort of go into, to go into battle a bit? Uh, yeah, especially at the start. She goes into a bit of a battle. She... Mm has a bit of an argument mm. about it. Mm. But otherwise, throughout the rest, she tends to just kind of sit back. Do you think it'd be fair to, to call your character a popular character in the show? Would you say she's as, as popular as the bully over here? Uh, I mean, I guess you could say she's viewed as a bit of a nerd because oh. she is that academic one, the yep. one that's focused and all that. Mm-hmm. But she's popular, but she's a bit quieter as well. Okay. Now, before you actually uh, were involved in this play, had anybody actually read John Marsden's novel before? No. 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 So not, not one oh, of you had I actually... Did. You had. And, yes. And had you enjoyed the book before? Uh, yes, I enjoyed the book. You were. Now, for the th- other two who haven't read the book before and you're now sort of slap banging in front of, you know, in this mm-hmm. wonderful play, 
is it a novel that you would recommend to your peers to read? Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yep. I actually, I read it for the audition, but mm-hmm. I ended up being like, wow, I'm just reading this for fun at this mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, what, what were you going to say there in, in regards to the book? Is Why, why would you recommend it for your peers? Well, I Come just... on close to the microphone for me. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, I just think that it seems so interesting and people don't really get that until you sort of see, like you sort of hear about it and, mm. yeah, if you just yeah. read like the back of the book, you'll be interested like immediately mm. straight away. Okay. He's such a good writer. Yeah. He is. He is a fabulous writer, isn't he? I've got to say, he spent some time in Tasmania, mm-hmm. I found out, when I was doing a little bit of research on Marsden, so he's got the big thumbs up from me. Now, Laura, I'll finish off uh, with you. When does the show start? How much are the tickets <laughs> and how can people book? Uh, right, so booking is at narrowplayers.com.au mm-hmm. um, or they can visit the Shoalhaven Entertainment Centre and grab tickets at the um, box office there as well. We sell through the Entertainment Centre. Um, and the show starts this Saturday, the 16th of March. Oh, how exciting. Yes, it's really <laughs> exciting. Um, at 8 o'clock, our um, nighttime shows are at 8 o'clock. And then the show runs for three weekends, basically over the three weeks, um, until the 30th of March. And we're finishing with a matinee at 2 p.m. So there's a few matinees to come to, too, if you're not happy about going out at night mm. and that type of thing. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, and a few um, evening pr- performances as well. All right, I said that was the last question, but I was lying. <laughs> I was lying. That's what I love about live radio. Um, I'm going to ask my bully to uh, to sit back down from the microphone okay. because um, I've got a question uh, for both of you. But if you two would like to, you know, if you want to jump in because you don't think they're answering it correctly, then uh, <laughs> by all means do. Um, before you guys leave tonight, I'd love to talk about the music mm. in the show f- from Annie Zota. I believe she's written some original music tell me about that Laura oh I was just blown away I I asked my friend Annalise Sota if she could write us an original piece because it's so expensive to Mm. to pay for the rights for music Mm. when you're doing a play and not that we need music in this play but it's just nice in between scenes when the scenes are changing to have something and beginning and end of the show of course to create a mood and an atmosphere and I said, I wanted something that was moody teenager. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she came back in three days with this amazing song called So Much To Tell You, of course. Um, and the girls are all singing it backstage. Oh, it's yeah. hilarious. Oh. Every time it comes on, I can just hear them singing along with it. It's fantastic. They love it. <laughs> so, Rosie, what did you think the first time you I heard the song? really impressed. And I, I, I did not believe because I've had Annie as a drama teacher before. I was like, she can she can sing and write songs Oh, too. so you didn't know that beforehand? No, oh, wow. I didn't. And I think with The Moody Teenager, it really delivers. <laughs> and it actually, I think it really fits like the energy of mm. the play. Oh. Guys, I've got to say, the show sounds absolutely fantastic. And I'd like to thank Laura, Matilda, Rosie and Brianna for coming in this afternoon and talking about the show. So much to tell you. Is it fair to say break a leg this Saturday? Yeah, Can absolutely. I say that? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And the good news is we're actually going to uh, have an exclusive listen to the song, our first on Tuesday Drive. But uh, before we do, I want to give you the opportunity now to see the play. And I've got two tickets to give away, and you just have to answer this uh, multiple choice question. Now, John Marsden, not you, don't you answer the question, please. <laughs> please don't answer the question. It's going to ruin my whole show. Uh, John Marsden released the, uh, the novel So Much to Tell You back in 1987. Who was the premier? of New South Wales? Was it A, Nick Reiner, B, Barry Unsworth, C, Sir Joe Bielke-Peterson, or D, Jeff Kennett? Who was the Premier of New South Wales? Multiple choices, pretty easy. If you'd like to have a go at winning a ticket or two, give me a call on double four double two one zero four five. And remember, you do have to go on air, and you do have, of course, get the answer correct. And now for our exclusive listen to uh, Annie Zoda's song, So Much to Tell You, which has been written for the play. And it is seven minutes to six. This is Tuesday Drive. It's absolutely lovely to have your company this afternoon. We're still around 31 degrees, so I wonder how you're going. I shouldn't say struggling because it's not it's not the hottest day we've had, but I guess it's still a bit of a surprise uh, considering it, well, we're well into uh, autumn now. Now, of course, we had some of the cast from Narrow Player's latest production of So Much To Tell You, and uh, two tickets are up for grabs to go and see the show. 
And the question was, it's based around the fact that uh, John Marsden released his novel, So Much to Tell You, back in 1987. And the question was, or who is, who was the Premier of New South Wales? And I've actually got Alison. I believe, Alison, you're calling from Shoalhaven Heads. Yeah, that's right. How are you going today? Wonderful. It's a great day. Yeah, have you been too hot down there in Shoalhaven Heads? No, it's really lovely. Oh, yeah, that's the... Hey, just before I ask you the question, you got any nice bushwalks around uh, that e- neck of the woods? Yeah, there's a beautiful one, so I couldn't tell you exactly where. We just go along the beach. Oh, gosh, yeah. Was, oh, you, you, you're so lucky. You've got some beautiful beaches down there. I'm a bit jealous, actually. Yeah. Hey, now, I have got two tickets up for grabs, so I'm hoping you're going to get this, Alison. The question is, who was the Premier of New South Wales? Was it A, Nick Reiner, B, Barry Unsworth, C, Sir Joe Bjorki peterson or D, Jeff Kennett? Uh, I think it's B, Barry Unsworth. Oh, I've been waiting months to play that. So thank you, Alison. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, you, you got it correct. Well done. Well done. Do you go and see many productions out down there at Narra Players? No, we've never seen one. Oh, excellent. Well, you are going to absolutely uh, love this. Um, I'm just going to pop you on hold and then I'm going to get your details so I can get some tickets organised for you. So don't hang up for me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Alice. And, and uh, Barry was actually the uh, the 36th uh, Premier of New South Wales, a member of the Labor Party and Premier up until 1998, where he was pipped at the post by Nick Griner at the next election. And uh, Barry was actually born in Dubbo and left school at only 15, apprenticed as an electrical fitter.